Hi, it's Mark Bleesk here again. I'm going to be working with uh, making some spoons right now. Uh, this process that I'm going to be doing is uh, from start to finish. And uh, I'll show you some of the procedures that I use with my students. As well, I would like to show you uh, how to use a wide variety of hand tools and even some power tools in order to get the job done. You can use any process of these that you want. You can go with one tool right through from beginning to end, uh, or you could uh, take and pick and choose the tools that you want to use, especially if you don't have them. You might just have one very simple tool and hey, do the whole thing with just that. That's fine too. Uh, whatever you have, uh, you will get the job done and I'm gonna show you how to do that. At any rate, let's go on, get on to making some spoons. Okay, we're gonna actually start carving a paddle right now. And uh, what I want to do is show you my setup first uh, and then we'll get, get actually started. Uh, if you have a vise, like I have a bench vise, that's fantastic. That's a really nice way to go. Uh, you can do this in your lap as well, as you'll see a little later on. Uh, if you have just a, a, a vise like this, this is a drill press vise. I have made it so it can be clamped on with a clamp like this onto a table. That's fine too. Um, and uh, it'll work just uh, great. I use this at school all the time with my students so I can have a, w a wide variety of kids if we run out of these kind of bench clamps. Uh, then we go on to these and sort of get everybody involved. I'll put that on the floor here. Uh, we could, if you don't have a, a bench clamp, maybe you have an old, uh, uh, let's just move this over here. Maybe you have an old C clamp like this here and you can take that C clamp and just clamp it to a table uh, as I have it here. Nice old C clamp works just fine. Uh, so you could do that as well. But right now I have a nice bench uh, vise and I'm gonna use that uh, to do this project right now. All right, so. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, this tool. Uh, it's called a spoon gouge and not because it's used for making spoons, but because it's in the shape of, uh, yes, you said it, it's in the shape of a spoon. Uh, it's used to gouge out uh, uh, inner uh, circles, like a, a half round, that sort of thing, and it works perfect for making a spoon. Uh, a lot of people don't use a spoon gouge to do it. A lot of people just use a uh, hook knife like this, that you see here, which I'll show you a little later. Uh, some people use a hook knife like this, which I'll show you a little later and uh, other people will use just a chip carving knife uh, like you see here with a blade like that or a blade like that depending on what it is that you uh, or how you like to do it. I also have different ways of hammering the uh, spoon gouge. Uh, I am going to use either a, a wood mallet like you see here okay uh, e very easy to make and or a brass mallet like this, not easy to make and very expensive to buy. But I like it because it's very uh, tight to my hand and I have a lot of control with it. Not that you have to go out and buy one right away. A ha mallet like this, a hammer would do just fine too. Uh, it uh, tends to mushroom. If you use a, a regular steel hammer, it mushrooms your uh, end of the, the chisel a little bit. So you have to be careful about uh, using a hammer and really whacking it. You know, a brass mallet tends to be a little bit softer on it and a wooden mallet even softer yet. So what I've done here is I've taken a pencil, drawn a picture of a spoon onto here. Then I took and drew an inner circle like you see here. So I have a rim and that's not the exact finish of the, of the spoon, but it gives me a rough place to go. And then I drew the side of the spoon, how roughly I want it to look. And this roughly cut it out on a bandsaw. Um, and so I can get uh, into, into the carving mode. This is dried lumber, it's not green lumber. Uh, a little bit harder to carve, but it really makes a nice spoon. Uh, I also do green lumber, which I don't have any right now, otherwise I'd show you. I'm using just cherry wood, hard cherry wood uh, that's been air dried, I mean uh, kiln dried. All right, so now I'm going to start by going around the spoon like this. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating a border, I guess you could say, around the whole spoon, uh, bowl of the spoon. And as I do it, you notice how I hold the ch uh, the actual gouge? I'm putting my fingers like so and not underneath the sharp end of it, but I'm using it so that I can hold it and put my fingers against the wood like this and it's not going to slip and it's going to be a nice even cut. Quite often I'll see my students holding like this and they're just whacking away on it and it tends to slip and is dangerous, number one. Also, it's not accurate. Uh, you wanna be accurate so you get down there, get right down to the base of the wood there and then just give it little taps, love taps. You don't have to whack on this thing like you're doing whack-a-mole. You just wanna just keep on going around 
until you have, and each cut is overlapped from the next one so that you'll get a nice uh, circumference going around the, the bowl of the spoon. Once you've done that border all the way around, and I'll show you what that looks like so you can have a good C, look C, and you'll see that that is all the way around. Just a border, it's not very deep, maybe an eighth of an inch deep. That's all you need. And then once you have that, lock that in. Also, when I put it into a vise, I make sure that it is raised up above the vise surface so that if I slip, for whatever reason, it does not get hit the metal of the vise. That way it's not going to dig into anything that I have around the vise so that uh, I keep my tool nice and sharp. And I'll talk about sharpness of tools in a moment. I use a mallet this time, not for any other reason, just to show you that I can use a mallet. This mallet has an oak head and a maple handle, but it's, you can make it out of almost any hardwood. Uh, if you have lignum vita, that's the best one, but that's very expensive stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, carve it towards the center. So every one of my cuts stops at center. And the reason I teach this to my students this way is so that they don't try to do the whole thing all at once. You just do little bites at a time. There's no rush. Uh, the tendency is for everybody who wants to just gouge this thing out and get it done. But if you do that, you're going to run into problems, especially if you're a novice and never done this before. Yes, there's carvers out there that can just take this and, and uh, in five seconds just have a spoon. But we're taking people who have never done this before. Uh, oops. And getting them. So now what I'm doing is I'm holding my, rather than the, the holding it lower this like I did before, I did, held it lower before so I get accuracy. Now I'm holding it, I'm putting a little bit of pressure down with my hand this way, pushing down. And I'm pushing, I mean hitting with the mallet so that I have an angle and it should bite. If it's not biting, you haven't got enough angle. You want to bite him. And I'm not taking off a huge amount. Just chipping away at it. Very satisfying. Now, if it slides, just undo your vise and redo your vise. If you have to put more than one vise on there, put more, one, one, more than one vise on there. And clean it up right to the center of the bowl. Always stop at the center of the bowl. If you go past the center, well, then you're going to lose the roundness of your bowl. And it's not going to look like a spoon. Now you have to, de to predetermine how deep you want to go. Do you want to have a spoon that's going to fit in your mouth? Do you want to have a spoon that's going to be stirring up a batter of some sort? Do you want to have a spoon that's a tasting spoon? That's a big horking bowl on it so that you can taste whatever it is that you're making. Do you want to just for show, just you want to hang it on the wall? I mean, a lot of people do that. Um, these spoons that I'm making here are meant to be used. During the uh, month of February, I work for an organization called Paddles, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, Festival de Voyageur. And in Festival de Voyageur, I get dressed up in costume. You might have seen my costume on Instagram. And I make spoons is one of the things I do there. And paddles and just about anything else that you can make out of wood. But it's all done with traditional methods. All right, so. I'm not going to bore you with the whole carving of that. What I'm doing right now, and as you can see, it didn't take very long, and I already have uh, fairly deep. It's going right in there. And uh, that's, uh, I can continue that on, which I will, uh, and I can then get the total depth of the bowl that I want. I want to show you another tool, and this is a uh, crooked scop uh, hook knife. Uh, again, we want to always, I always tell my students, you want to always occupy your hands safely before you use a tool or a machine. So I've got my hands locked in position here, and I'm also looking at my body so that if I'm going to miss and, and, and move, I'm not going to hit myself so that my elbows are stopping me, okay? And then I can just go like this, and look at that, it just takes that out so nicely. You don't have to use a lot of force. It looks like I'm really pushing down on it. I'm really not. And just going around. And that just smooths it out so nicely. There we go. Getting it down to 
a spoon that's going to fit into my mouth nicely. I don't want to go too deep. There we go. Now I'm going to have to turn my back here a bit to you and come around that side. Now you're going to have to feel which way the grain is going. As you're carving, all of a sudden it'll go bang, bang, bang. It doesn't want to go in that direction. That means that you're going against the grain. So you always have to, and, and you're, or maybe your knife is dull, uh, but you're going to always have to figure out uh, why it's doing that and don't just continue doing it, trying to use more muscle to get it through. No, you, your tool should just carve really nice and smoothly. So if it's going the wrong way, it'll bump. If the blade is dull, it'll bump. It should never bump. You should always hear that nice grinding, carving noise that the, the uh, tool would make. Now, when you're putting your tool down, always put it with the blade facing up. And if there's a lot of other people around, you should demarcate your area so that you're not going to have them put their hand down on a sharp tool or push them onto the floor and dull your tool for you. This is my workspace. Nobody else comes into it while I'm here. Again, I'm going to show you it's getting deeper and yeah, almost at the finished depth that I whoops the finished depth that I want to be there right there okay so finished depth is almost there I would just finish that off a bit more using this tool and didn't take very long to get in there and get that done there we go So I have a finished product almost done at the base. I'm not going to go any deeper than that. Now, at this point, I could say, take sandpaper and just sand that in there and get it sanded out and I'd have a bowl of a spoon ready to go. Done. I could also uh, take another knife that has a maybe a, 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 bitter, a better uh, curve to it that's going to fit in there a bit better. Okay, so I can get that bottom a bit better there. And just smooth that out. So I'll smooth that edge out. And you hear it popping, so I'm going to turn and go the other way. There we go. And you notice how I'm turning around? That could also be done using a spoon gouge. You can get in there and just turn around with the spoon gouge and do the same thing with the spoon gouge and it'll get the same job done. Now I've got different types of spoon gouges. I have a bigger one that will really get in there and do that exact same job that that uh, crooked knife is doing. Different sizes for different jobs. To get in there get right in there these are hider knives again they're used uh, to pull towards you or push away from you it has a double-sided blade on there and that can really get in there as well and clean that up for you as well different knives oh look at that that's beautiful for different purposes okay and then i have one that's a very very a strong hook very similar to the one I've been using but I've got a different type of handle on this one you can see that and that's so that I can hold it like this and pull it towards myself okay a crooked handle beautiful so that bowl is almost done now I'm not going to bore you with that I'm going to you now finish that off when I come back uh, it will be at a point to where I'm going to start doing the outside of, of the uh, spoon. Okay, we're back again. So what I've done here is uh, very simply uh, taken uh, the outside shape that I had and carved it out very simply with a bandsaw like that. You can see it's been cut out with a bandsaw. Chunk, chunk, come. Very simple. This is how I teach my students. They all know how to use a bandsaw safely and they can do a cut like that. Very simple to do. Uh, I guess you could do it with a coping saw as well. So you can't see my face, but I want you to be able to see this a bit better than, than my face. You don't have to look at me. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back into the bench vise here. As I said before, you can put this on, uh, clamp it to a table. Oh, and you'll notice I left this portion all together where the shaft is. I didn't cut the shaft out. And that's so I can really clamp this hard into a vise. I have some, I have more uh, clamping surface. It just works a lot better. So now I have these knives that uh, I've made, sort of, kind of. Uh, I go to garage sales and I pick up these old dinner knives. They usually had, they had the round ends on them. You've probably seen them at garage sales, that sort of thing. They have very good steel. They're made uh, in Sheffield, England, or in uh, Zollingen, Germany. And uh, very good steel. I just grind them 
uh, careful not to take the temper out of them, sharpen them up, and uh, I got all sorts of different shapes, uh, make a little leather case for them so they don't get dull. And now I can use that as a chip carving tool and just take off the outside of that spoon, carve it down. There you go, look at that. And you notice again, I've made sure that I have my hands safely occupied. Here's what a lot of guys will do. They'll hold on to their tool and use the other hand separate. They'll hold the wood and, and use their other hand separate. And that's fine, I guess, if you're really, really good with your tool. I'm teaching junior high, senior high students who more often than not have never used a tool like this before. If you hold it like this, I do this all the time. I just like my fingers where they belong on the end of my hand. And just carve that off. As you're doing it, you should feel to see the depth and the thickness that you're going through. You're not trying to get it down to a finished state right now. You're just trying to get it rough. And you notice how that knife cuts right through the end grain? What does that mean? Oh, it means it's sharp, okay? That's killing dry, dried cherry and just chipping off like it's butter. How do I get it to do that? Well, I may as well tell you. I have or purchased um, this film here. There's a film on top of here. You can see it's got a, it's a pressure a sensitive uh, film. And uh, this is uh, 10 microns. And uh, this one here is uh, uh, five microns uh, as far as grit is concerned. I have some 15 micron stuff as well. And even finer than that, I have some diamond coated stuff. And it's just uh, made by 3M. And it's a very, very fine, fine, it feels like paper actually. And I'm gonna, I take my knife and I'm going to make sure I uh, hone it on there and uh, keeping as if you're sharpening it on a regular sharpening stone and always away from yourself to begin with and in the final ones you do it towards yourself. So uh, at the beginning on a rougher uh, grit you're going to go away from yourself. When you're doing the final sharpen you're going to come towards yourself. You just have to be careful when you come towards yourself that you the piece that you're working on is very flat. This is put onto a, a one inch piece of arborite uh, so it's very very thick and good and solid. I put it onto glass as well. I have pieces of glass that I put it on to keep it nice and smooth and straight and flat. And then you keep that and hone it down so that it's going to be nice and sharp. And I go to the final, very, very fine piece here afterwards and put a final uh, um, sharpness to it. Keep it sharp all the time. Don't let your tools get dull. A dull tool is a dangerous tool. I always tell my students and uh, just be very careful. So here we go. So there's no way I'm gonna hurt myself doing this because my our hands move all together as one. And carve that up, look at that. Okay, so I get that until I get the bowl where I want it to be. Carve that down a bit there, there we go. And I'm feeling it, get that edge up. It's got those telltale chip carving marks, I love that. If you look at pieces that are done in a lot of the country folk art types of carving, they leave those chips in there and you could do that on your spoon if you wish. That's totally your, your business. A lot of people like to have that on there. There we go. Let's have a look at that. You can see, yep, those chip carving pieces in there. Look at that, I love that. Okay, once that's to a point, now you do it on both sides of course. And once that's done to the point that you have it almost to the thickness that you want, then you're gonna wanna get yourself a rasp or a file of some sort, if you have one. And I have two different types here. You've seen it before in my paddle making as well. This is a hand uh, cut rasp. So I'll move my tools out of the way here. And now I'm just going to rasp that into the shape that I want. These hand cut rasps are amazing. They really are very aggressive. And so you have to be careful that you don't take off too much. I'm getting right down to the center piece, stopping at the center. Now when I talk, uh, teach my students, I always teach them to work in um, halves or quarters when you're carving something that needs to be balanced. So I'm doing this side, this half, and then I'll do that half. If I'm doing a shaft, I do quarter, 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 all the way around, and then it'll be round and you can actually uh, uh, judge where you are as you're going around, making sure that it's going to stay round. So that's getting to a point where I want it. I can feel with my fingers how thick it is. And you have to continually feel where that is and know where you're going with that shape. And there we go. And then I have a finer one here as well. 
as you see here, finer one. And we are going to clean it up with a finer one. Those chips are gone but like i said if you want to leave those chips in there fine leave them in that's that's totally you uh that's totally for you now i'm going to trim this in here afterwards that'll be the next step i'm going to first of all get this side done it's basically doing exactly what i've done here i'm going to leave a little ridge down the center here i just like the looks of it and a ridge into the center portion here as well you'll see that as it as it shapes up but you can see the bowl inside is almost done the bowl on the outside is almost done. Doesn't take a long time to make a, pa a, a paddle, make a, a spoon. I make too many paddles, that's the problem. Uh, make a spoon. And uh, here we go. We'll see you when, uh, when we've got the bowl done. In order to keep your tools uh, sharp and uh, usable, uh, it's a good idea to have a like a case or a, a some kind of a wrapping to put your tools into but each one of my tools has its own little cover as well i made them out of leather you can make them out of heavy uh, duck cloth or whatever you want to uh, and that is important because all of your tools need to remain sharp clean and ready to be used and if you don't have them that way you're not going to be able to do any kind of good work uh, in the future so make sure you keep your tools sharp and keep them protected Now we're going to do the shaft of the actual spoon. Uh, again, everything's still rough. Uh, I've cut out the shaft with the bandsaw. You could use a jigsaw. You could just carve it out if you want to. I just like to get rid of the material so it makes it a little bit easier. Using a pencil, I'm going to find the center point of this shaft and I'm going to just make a line down the center like so. There we go. And I make it, there already is a line there and then a line here. I use my fingers in this way. I pinch the, the pencil like this and I use this finger as a guide. I can make it whatever distance I want, put it up against whatever I want to draw a line onto and I can make that line pretty darn straight using that method. And my students really think that's like magic but it's really a, an old method of drawing a line, a freehand line without having to uh, get your ruler out every time. And we just want a, 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 a guesstimate. We just want a rough idea as to where center is. Now I'm going to put it into a vise or you can clamp it down however you want to hold it in place. And you get, because I'm clamping the spoon I have to be very gentle that I don't overdo it. Now I'm going to use a rasp um, or you can use a file as well or, or you could use a, a knife and, and carve it and, and then again just take off the excess using a knife as well. Uh, whatever tools you have at your disposal I like to use a rasp. And what I'm doing here, the reason I mark this into quarters, is I'm going to do one quarter at a time, not trying to do the whole thing. So all I'm doing is a very, very light pass with the rasp. Doesn't take much, all the way down. And remember, don't touch the rasp or any sharp tool to another piece of metal. So here you notice I have a piece of wood in here uh, and I have the metal on the outside of that. So if I hit something, it's gonna be this wood, uh, but you still have to be careful. Now I'm holding this and I'm doing it with the other hand. My right hand is doing the, the rasping and I go from quarter to quarter, like so. Leave the lines on, we'll get rid of those later. So I've done basically a quarter round and now I'm going to go and do the other quarter. And as you can see, it really doesn't take a lot of time to get this reasonably round. I'm using cherry wood, which really carves quite nicely. And then again, now I'm gonna use the, the curved part of the rasp to get into this curved part of the spoon. It's just going to make it that much easier. Now I'm going to leave a little ridge here because I really enjoy that. But I'm going to come back and visit that just in a minute, not right away. And again, I'm making it into a quarter round. I'm going to turn this around so you can see me working on this piece as well, rather than me turning around. And... Hopefully we have a good drain in the, in the shaft so that's not going to break. Sometimes that happens. Bad things happen when you're carving sometimes. And you might have to start over again. Not to worry. It's part of a learning experience. You just have to 
you know, roll with that. Now I'm going to, now that I've done all four, I go right around to create a roundness, a better roundness. So I've done all four sides, now I'm going all the way around and just rounding out that shaft. Now that really didn't take that long. And I've got but a very hefty uh, shaft right now, which I'm going to take down considerably afterwards. But it gives me somewhere to start as far as the thickness is concerned and as far as where I want to go with that uh, shape is concerned. Now I'm going to put the shaft into the uh, vise now because I want to continue that nice ridge I have here. I want to continue that forward. And I'm going to switch to a finer rasp just so I can get in there. Not so much that I want a finer rasp, I just need a smaller rasp. Now you could probably do this all just holding it in your hand rather than putting it in a vise. That's fine too. I'm doing this so that it's easier for me to film. And I got that nice ridge going down there. Look at that. Looks beautiful. And then do the other side as well. And all of this does not take a huge amount of time, but you must take your time so that you get it done nicely. Don't rush it. Now remember that the file, rasp, whatever you're using, only cuts on the forward stroke. Uh, and you make sure that you're constantly working on the forward. The back stroke is just a draw. You're just doing a very light back stroke. It's not like a saw. Well, a saw only works in the forward stroke too. A lot of people go bang, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's not doing any good. Uh, you wanna just cutting on the forward stroke. Only cutting on the forward stroke. It sounds like I'm cutting both ways, but I'm not. The, la the back stroke is a very light pass. And the forward stroke is the one that I'm really trying to get the material off with. All right. And again, you can see here, I've continued that ridge and I'm going to center it up a bit better. I'm going to continue that ridge all the way through into the handle of the spoon. Right now, the spoon looks very gargantuan for a small spoon that it is. I need to refine the shaft a lot more. I want to refine that some more as well. So I'm going to work on this a bit and we'll come back and see where I'm at and we'll continue on. So we're back again and what I've done is I've uh, definitely taken a huge amount of material off of the shaft and I've refined the end here a bit. I got it nice and flat and a little bit of an angle. All right, so now what I wanna do is uh, continue on. I'm using it just by holding my hand now and I'm going to just refine this to a point where I really, really like it. You'll notice I've continued that ridge right down like that, go like well back and you can see it down like a boat almost, okay? So this is still very, very rough. Now, one of, the, one of the things that happens with my students quite often is they'll file here on the edge of their spoon, but they don't realize that they go have gone over and they've basically taken away from the bowl of the spoon. Not a big deal, you can always flatten it out by just flattening out the top of the spoon until everything's even again. But it's really important that you don't want to have that to be a sharp edge right away. We'll sand that to that point afterwards. But right now, you're just trying to get the basic shape of what you want this spoon to look like. So you're going to definitely take off more off the, um, and notice how I'm moving it around, more than moving it around. Uh, so you want that shaft of the spoon to be nice and refined and not too clunky and uh, have a little bit of shape to it. Uh, and that doesn't take a huge amount to do that. Uh, it just requires you to look and say, okay, what is that going to look like in the end? And make it look a little bit better. Take off a little bit at a time. Quite often as I'm carving a spoon, what I originally started out to make, uh, it didn't happen because I thought, oh, gee, I like this better. And that's okay, because you're the maker. You could make it any way you want. So that spoon is getting refined. Uh, it'll fit in my mouth, that's good, because that's what I want it for. I want it to be a personal spoon. After you get to that point, um, yeah, oh, one more thing I forgot to say last time is that as you're using your rasps, make sure you clean them out uh, with a file card so that uh, they're ready for the next time you want to use them and they're not clogged up with any sawdust and or resin. So clean that off on a regular basis. Now I have three different types of sandpaper. You could use more. I'm just showing you the types that I'm using right now. This is 80 grit. It has, uh, uh, unfortunately it's not on the back here, but normally it has written on the back 80. And I'm going to now curve that. I like to use the crook of my thumb like that. And 
move it back and forth until I get it to the smoothness I want. I don't want to take away that nice ridge I put in there, so I have to be very careful about that. And just sand and sand and sand and sand some more. Uh, this is the portion of the project that people tend to rush through is the sanding part. It's very important to take your time. It's going to take a lot more time than I'm going to have for this video presentation. You keep on going until you've got all of your lines out with this 80 grit. Once you finish getting all the lines out with 80 grit, you go to something like a 120 grit. The higher the number, the finer the grit of the sandpaper. And then again, do the same thing again. For uh, And I always tell my students 300 strokes. Uh, that's just so they don't come back to me every five seconds and say, is this ready? Is this done? Is this done? I said, did you do 300 strokes? Usually 300 strokes will do the job, but you have to be careful about that too, that you don't sand right through your project. But uh, yeah, for uh, you need a good amount of strokes in order to get the job done. Don't think that you're going to get it done in one fell swoop. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to go outside to shovel the, the, the sidewalk and I'd get very, very frustrated because we have a big snowfall. It was just taking me forever. And my dad would come outside and say, one shovel full at a time, you take that shovel full away, that means you don't have to do that again, your job is going to get done. Don't think that it's gonna happen overnight and don't think that it's gonna, I mean, in, in, a, in a miracle, you have to get, you know, put some sweat equity into it in order to get the job done. So I've gone back to the 80 grit and I'm going to now sand the whole thing with 80 grit. Then I'm gonna to go to 120. Then I've got some uh, uh, 180 here. Then I'll go to some 220 and that'll be my finish. Uh, uh, spoon and then once I've done that I'll come back and I'll show you the finish that we're going to be putting on in the end. Okay I've been sanding here for quite a while I'm down to 220 grit sandpaper and I'm really getting that bowl to where I want it to be. I've sanded all the outsides yeah 300 strokes or whatever but it feels like that that's for sure and I'm continually looking for scratches anything that I could possibly think that would not look good when I put a final finish on. And here you have it, nice and smooth. I've got that ridge in there, it's really showing up nicely. And then I finished off the end. Every spoon is different, It's uh, I like that. I don't necessarily want to make them all the same. I like to have a little bit of a difference between them. Now I'm using this stuff, it's a beeswax mixed with mineral, um, uh, mineral oil. And uh, there's also diff all different types of uh, salad bowls, wa waxes out there, You whatever product you want to put on. You can just put on plain old mineral, uh, mineral oil, which you can get from any drugstore. Uh, it's cheap, but the uh, wax adds a little bit to it. Uh, gives it a little bit of a better um, finish and a longer lasting finish as well. Uh, and you have to re reapply this every once in a while. And you can see that that cherry is just popping. It's just such gorgeous wood. Uh, I used to order my wood from a guy uh, in Minnesota, and he said, you know, Mark, there's only two types of wood in this world. There's cherry wood and then there's scrap wood. Uh, I don't necessarily totally agree with that, but cherry wood is a gorgeous, gorgeous wood. And I'm just gonna make sure I got lots of that in the bowl. You don't wanna leave it so that you're tasting the, the wax. You wanna have it so that the wax is just a protectant. And then rub it in really good. Get it right into the grain of the, uh, of the wood. And there you have it, a nice, nice finished uh, spoon. You can see the ridge really comes out now. You can see that and the end looks really cool. Nice and straight, beautiful. Okay, there you have your finished spoon. You uh, can now go out and hopefully make your own spoon. Good luck.